Mistake. Hello guys, I hope you got some energy in your break with coffee and uh, pastries and water and uh, wherever you at. So welcome to a decentralized world with LipHP. As Marcus spoiled, I'm uh, Vasco Sanj and I'm a software engineer and at Moxie. Uh, my uh, time in the peer-to-peer -peer space uh, started a while ago. Basically, during my master thesis, I got the opportunity to create a decentralized infrastructure for IoT. And then, after working on another stuff for a while, basically, I, I joined the core dev team for maintaining the projects for JavaScript of LipHP and IPFS as well. You can find me s in some place in the internet, others you may not. Uh, so basically, my presentation is divided into three main topics. I will start by explaining you the, the road that uh, leads to LipHP, followed by a journey with its JavaScript implementation, and then the road ahead in the future of it. So the path of LipHP. Uh, my primary goal here is for you to understand where LipHP gets into the peer-to-peer -peer space. Uh, by the way, any anyone of you ever experimented with LipHP here? <laughs> okay. So it will be good news for everyone. Uh, so uh, uh, first of all, I will not explain to you what is peer-to-peer and -peer, its advantages today, but I will provide you a brief context of uh, the peer-to-peer -peer in order for you to understand the vision of LipHP. So during the 60s, more specifically during the Cold War, uh, United, the United States and the United Kingdom wanted to create a communications network that could survive a global war. And for this, of course, you need to have uh, decentralization as a requirement in order to have single point of failure and uh, a resilient network. So uh, the problem went after that, when the internet started growing and it grew in a completely different way. And now we have large players controlling all the traffic that we create. We have no, ef no, efficient, uh, no efficiency in terms of getting data. For example, I want to get a file from Victor, like his presentation, and he needs to provide it to me through a third party central place or even a lack of uh, uh, good uh, internet in the edges of the internet. Uh, also, I bend with consumption, as we need to provide data to centralized places and get it back from us while we are like next to each other. So uh, uh, the peer-to-peer -peer concept is far from recent. As I, as I told, ARPANET was created uh, m mostly 50 years ago, and it was a peer-to-peer -peer network. However, after the commercialization of the internet, and the economic pressures, as also uh, Victor helped me describe him before, uh, it led to the centralization of the internet. And of course, also at the time, developing peer-to-peer -peer applications was not an easy task and involved lots of complex, uh, complexity that you need to, tr to go through all your walk until you get something that works. So, uh, however, about 20 years ago, we had uh, several peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks and services that appeared, like uh, Lots of them in a, a space of two to three years. You know probably some, like Napster, Nutella, Kaza, and LimeWire. But uh, ex uh, uh, the problem was that the state of the art did not improve a lot since then. And this was mostly because each implementation made a lot of assumptions, and they were mostly focused on file sharing use cases. Uh, none of them, or almost none of them, were open source. They were not upgradable in a way that when new technologies and new protocols appear, we can't use it unless we do like big changes to the core of their implementations. We don't ha they, don't, they didn't have any specifications or documentation at all, and uh, they hadn't no governance to reach in order to get feedback and try to improve things. So a little bit before the LipHP appeared, uh, the IPFS paper was released by Juan Benet in 2014. And the IPFS, I think most of you know, at least if you came to previous editions of OpenJS, it is a protocol that aims to make the web faster, safer, and more open. Uh, during the implementation of IPFS, the IPFS team realized that uh, its networking layer, LipHP, could use for more than just IPFS. And they extracted it from a different project, and everyone could use it for building any general purpose peer-to-peer uh, -peer application or service. Uh, so the key differences uh, of LipHP compared to the previous services for, of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, are that the, it's a general purpose library of composable building blocks. There is its focus on enabling all types of peer-to-peer uh, -peer applications, even blockchains. 
Uh, it's a upgradable, an upgradable networking stack, multi-platform and multi-device interoperability. It uh, offers offline support and uh, is, of course, open source. So uh, if I want to describe you LibHP in one sentence, that's there, composable and modular networking library, which can be used as a networking layer for peer-to-peer -peer services and applications. And uh, basically, each one of uh, these pieces that you s see here can have custom protocols that you can implement for building your own services. For example, uh, considering uh, the transports, we have an interface called an interface transport, where basically, if you create uh, any transport, you can create a pigeon transport, for example, and if you fulfill the, the interface, and uh, you, you basically can run tests of that interface and check if your module is uh, uh, abstract, uh, it's uh, good enough in order to have the expectations of API that LibP2P wants. And if you edit it, basically you can use it as uh, another transport. So uh, without any more uh, pauses, we go into some JavaScript now. And my main goal here is, f is for us to understand how LibP2P solves networking problems while also exploring its JavaScript implementation. So uh, the JavaScript impl implementation of LibP2P, as well as all of them, is open source and uh, in the JavaScript case is one of the most major implementations of LibP2P so far. You can find it on GitHub, on uh, LibP2P slash GSLibP2P. Uh, the readme really contains a lot of useful information like examples, usage, and uh, one important thing, uh, as this is really modular, is that a table containing all the packages available in order for you to understand what you can use according to your requirements. The good thing and the key uh, different thing about uh, the JavaScript implementation is that it runs in the browser, of course. Uh, there are other implementations uh, with different levels of maturity, being uh, GoLibP2P and RustLibP2P, the most advanced ones. Uh, so what we will build here today uh, will not build really anything, because it would take more time, but uh, we will think during the process as we would build a simple decentralized social network. And uh, uh, the goal is to go through some challenges in rent to peer to peer applications and solve them. So for this, uh, we'll just cover the basics of LibP2P as LibP2P aims to solve all types of use cases. So we'll start by setting up a LibP2P application, connecting uh, uh, peers to the network, encrypting and reusing those connections, creating application level protocols, discovering peers, and broadcasting data through the network. So for setting up a LibP2P app, we have, uh, uh, two, uh, we have some different approaches possible. I feel that this one is the easiest one, at least for simple, uh, for starting. And uh, basically, you just need to, to require a function from LibP2P, which is create LibP2P. And in the first parameter, you pass the options that will build all those pieces that uh, I previously showed you. And uh, in the second parameter, you will receive a callback with uh, the LibP2P instance that you can use after that. Uh, note that uh, we are currently working a lot in improving this uh, developer experience, and uh, uh, hopefully in a few months we'll be able to use this with uh, async await and async iterators, and you would do something like const libp2p equals await create libp2p, and you wouldn't have all those callbacks that people usually don't like. Um, so uh, you want to connect to the network, right? If you don't connect, it's irrelevant, and we use transports for connecting peers. Uh, each transport includes basically the dialing and listing components that are the API expectations that I told before regarding its interface. So there are uh, lots of different transports where you can have really anything. Uh, we currently support on uh, JavaScript, TCP, WebSockets, and WebRTC, and uh, we are aiming to support Quick and Bluetooth uh, in the near future. And now you will see how easy it is to configure your nodes for LibP2P. Basically, uh, you, can cons you will pass the configuration to the first parameter, as I told you before, and uh, uh, each, each, uh, the uh, property, the most important property is modules. And in modules, you define each piece of the, all the logo of uh, LibP2P. And uh, in this case, we'll start by transport. So we, we require uh, TCP and WebSockets, which are transports that you can find in the table of, from the readme, and you, you put it in, in, the, in the transports array and you are able to use them immediately. 
Uh, other than that, uh, if you want, if you would build the pigeon transport, you would require it. It would not be a lp 2 p transport. It would be something from your repositories, and you could use it as any other one. So uh, you need, you have the transport, but you need to use th that transport to connect to another peer. And uh, uh, this is when things get more interesting. So in the first connection, uh, you, you usually connect to a known peer that we usually call a bootstrap peer or a list of different bootstrap peers. And we need their address in order to create a connection. And uh, now you think, OK, uh, this guy is, tell is talking about decentralized stuff. And the first thing he says is, OK, let's g get some centralized addresses in order to start the, um, the our node. Yes, uh, as local node discovery improves over time, we'll eventually not need this anymore. But uh, as I said, peer-to-peer, -peer, it's not recent, but it has to evolve a lot. And uh, we, if we in the future, we hope that we don't need this to start. And we don't really need. We can like find peers in a local network. But uh, to, have, uh, to, start, to start your, your node and get a, a really good glimpse of the entire network, uh, you actually need to do this in this moment. So as I also said, you need to know the addresses of the peers. And for this, we use uh, multi-others. And multi-others could uh, need an entire presentation just for me to explain to you. But being uh, quite brief, uh, multi-others are designed to be as modular and future-proof as lp 2 p And uh, for this, they basically have all the information that a node needs to know in order to connect to another node. It's more or less says, if you get a package to your home, you need to give your address. And some examples of multi-others here, you basically need to pass the IP family, the IP address, the transport that you want to use, and the port. If you want, for example, to use WebSockets over TCP, you use something similar to the second one. And you can use uh, all other types of things like DNS addresses. And I will not go deeper on this, but just for you to understand how we do this. So uh, we'll connect to the network. As I said, to the modules with the transports. We start our LPHP node. We get the, our bootstrap peer that we want to connect. That odd multi-other thing is one example, but uh, it could be simpler as well. This one will go through an IPFS node, basically. And uh, you create a multi-other, you dial to it, and you will connect to the peer. Of course, something I missed before, that those two lines, and they're really important. Basically, you, you, for you to dial with a peer, you need to be listening. And that's why those two lines uh, exist in this case, because we got uh, TCP and WebSockets. But in for this specific uh, case, we would only need the first one in order for our peer to be acceptable for connections. Uh, this can also be in the, in the create lp options in the first parameter. You can have another property which is called config, and you can set up the, those addresses there. So we were able to connect to a peer, at least you believe so. Uh, and uh, we, of course, we don't want to transmit data in plain text, right? So uh, you can uh, uh, use an encryption uh, mechanism for the connections. And except for the negotiation of the protocol, everything else will be encrypted. Uh, in lp 2 land, we have, uh, uh, and we talk about different uh, encryption mechanisms. For now, in, Lipid, in the JavaScript implementation, we only have uh, SecIO, but uh, we are working on having uh, at least TLS 1.3 and Quick in the near future. And for this, as simple as using the, the new piece of the cube, connection encryption, and uh, use the SecIO, and you immediately have the connections to, uh, encrypted. Another, another thing uh, uh, about, uh, about connections and the encryption is that uh, basically there is a, a process of negotiation, as I said before. And this process is uh, an exchange of messages while peer, where peers say w what the, uh, encryption mechanism they have. And they negotiate in order to decide what to use. Imagine that uh, uh, I want to communicate using SecIO, but the other peer only uses TLS 1.3. We'll not uh, get an ag agreement. And you, or we abort the connection, or it will be not encrypted. So. Uh, if we do different types of communications with the same peer, uh, we will not open different connections. This will not scale, right? So uh, imagine that we want to uh, direct communicate with a peer, uh, exchange web sub messages, DHT queries, all other set of protocols. 
uh, this wouldn't scale at all. So we have a concept called the multiplex, which we basically use for leveraging a single connection to have multiple conversations at the same time. You can imagine this as that wire over there, uh, which is the connection, and uh, each one of the smaller wires, uh, which I don't know the name in English, uh, is basically a stream. And uh, in this case, each, each stream has a color, but in reality, it doesn't have a color, but it has an identifier. And basically, the, what the multiplexer does is in the first bytes of the, of the transmitted data, he checks what, are the, what is the identifier and passes to the appropriate handler to the stream that uh, was uh, connected to. Okay, we briefly talked before about uh, discovering peers on the network, uh, but uh, I will go deeper on this now. We have uh, uh, different, uh, as, as everything, we have lots of uh, different possible options that you have in peer discovery. You have a lot of them as well, starting by bootstrap, which I briefly described before. Bootstrap is a simple discovery mechanism, and the goal of Bootstrap is for you when, once your nodes start, you will immediately try to connect with all those peers that you define as Bootstrap peers. Uh, MDNS, for example, is a local network discovery protocol. It's, it is used for local discovery. For example, your printers at home, if you have them uh, connected uh, through Wi-Fi, you will find them through MDNS. And here, you basically appear with MDNS uh, enabled, it will, uh, once in a while, send, uh, send announces to the network, okay, I'm here, I'm a LibHP node, if you, uh, if you happen to be around, connect me. And uh, uh, of course, you can connect it, but uh, one of the problems of MDNS is that it doesn't work in the browser. Then you have another set of protocols that are not focused, DHT with the random walk, rendezvous servers, Bluetooth, NFC, wherever. Uh, Example of this, uh, before we were dialing that peer manually, but we can do uh, that uh, connection just with the configuration. So uh, in the module side of things, you once again put uh, peer discovery and put the modules that you want to use. And in the configuration, you can also config the modules that you defined earlier. And so you, you can put a, a list of peers that you want your LIP2P bootstrap module to connect to. You could put uh, 10 or what, what else you would like, and uh, once the node starts, it will immediately connect to them. Uh, the DHT is a, a different thing here because it, is, it can be used as a discovery protocol and it can be used as what the DHT is, which I will explain later, but uh, you have to put the DHT in a separate uh, module and uh, the random walk, which is the discovery it's, actually, it's nowadays uh, configured through here. We want to change it to the peer discovery, but uh, we do not follow the interface peer discovery now for that, and that's why we currently have that here, but we will eventually put m move things in order to the API be and the configuration be as we want to. So, so far we went through the basis for building a regular peer-to-peer -peer app, but I, I told that we would do a social network thing. So, um, for, uh, for building a general peer-to-peer -peer application, we basically, as I showed you, you can customize the intended modules according to your requirements. You can implement uh, new modules if you need to, but you also can create specific uh, communication protocols, as LIP2P is a modular system of protocols. And so a protocol in LIP2P it's kind of similar to a RESTful API in a way, because in, uh, in a custom protocol, uh, each protocol has an identifier, and in a REST API, you have a route, and have an handler in both of cases. So it's really similar. And an example of this is uh, in IPFS, for example, is IPFS BitSwap, which is a protocol that uh, you basically, uh, through lip p exchange data between peers, but then IPFS decides what to do in order to save the data and it's transparent to, to LibP2P. So an example of a, a custom protocol, you, ba you basically just need to have the protocol identifier, the handler, and the send function for emitting the data. Uh, once again, this will be refactored, we will not use Pullstream anymore, and you will use async iterators, hopefully in the near future. Uh, basically, in the handler, you just receive through Pullstream uh, data each time another peer sends through this protocol and uh, you can send data through the pull stream as well. So this to integrate with our previous code base, uh, we basically need to tell LIP2P, okay, every time you receive communications from this social protocol protocol, just use my handler. 
and uh, for you to send data, you start. You need to. You, you can do differently, but the easiest uh, way of explaining is that you can dial a peer through a protocol and you'll receive the stream. There is that small wire that I told you about uh, inside connections. And with that stream, you are able to send the message through that stream. Okay, uh, this was useful in a social app application for chat, for example. But uh, uh, imagine a social feed in where you want to s send data to everyone or at least to anyone, anyone that is interested. For this, we use uh, PubSub. And uh, uh, PubSub is not more than a custom Lip2P protocol, but upgraded in a way that it is a PubSub router. It basically adds custom configurations for spreading messages through the peers that we want, uh, add the subscription logic, differentiate between what types of messages it is, if it's a publish, a subscribe, and unsubscribe. Uh, and for this, we basically exchange uh, protobuf encoded data with uh, a specific structure that allows you to uh, logically do all this. We have uh, two available implementations. I will not go into details about them, but uh, FloodSub and GossipSub is uh, maybe a pull request away from uh, being in JSLib uh, For using this, once again, is, uh, uh, it's kind of simple. However, uh, BubSub is still experimental in uh, JSLib P, and we need to, to pass a, a flag in order to enable it. And after enabling it, you basically can use PubSub subscribe. You set the topic you want, and you have an handler for receiving the messages. Remember, they are encoded in uh, protobuf, and you need to decode them. And uh, then for, for sending data, you basically encode and publish it through the API. Uh, I, will, I will go quite brief for the DHT, as it's a really complex topic. But basically, it's, it is an overlay network on top of the network topology in a way that uh, the physical connections are not the connections that we see in the DHT side of things. It's a key value lookup uh, service similar to a hash table, but in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. And uh, you basically can do peer routing, content routing, and content fetching with it. And the way that uh, the data flows around, it's according to the algorithm. So there is Kadimli, Accord, Coral, among others. And uh, I will not explain because each one would be different. So there are a lot of changes uh, and challenges around that lipid peak overs. And, intent, and uh, some of them are like nodes behind nodes, circuit relaying, subnetworks, the DHT, browser nodes. I will not explain this as it would be a, and get really complex. So the road ahead of uh, the JavaScript implementation, uh, we are in the process, as I said, of uh, uh, refactoring all our code bases, goodbye callbacks and pull streams. Uh, we want to decrease the bundle size with this and improve performance. We also are working a lot on enhancing the scalability of Lipid P, and for this, we, we are building a test bed where you, we can scale the network for thousands or even more of peers in order to understand if uh, th we can scale that much or not, and of course, learn new features, which is essential. So uh, Lipid P is still very experimental, of course, and uh, we, uh, our team knows that uh, we have a long way to go, but we need projects adopting Lipid P in order to get to problems that we wouldn't get if we didn't have users. And so some adopters are Polkadot, which is a blockchain. Ethereum Turaro will uh, also use Lipid P. Some applications of MetaMask, uh, OpenBazaar, which is a, a marketplace, Filecoin, uh, IPFS, among uh, very others. So I will uh, do uh, something, because you probably want to see something moving, right? Uh, let's do a really quick uh, experiment. The clock is ticking. Um, basically, uh, where is my mouse? Okay, so I will run a server. Uh, I, 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 will, I will not need because I just need to start the server. Uh, once once I, uh, the server is running, I will open a, a web page that the server is providing. And uh, I would like you to get your smartphones and uh, scan this QR code. Uh, where is my... Yeah, OK. So basically, um, I, I said that there are some limitations with browser support, because you, you can't uh, really connect to two different nodes um, in directly via a browser. And so this, my peer, which is running here, 
is, is, ra is running uh, uh, and it's connecting to a centralized server, which is a WebSocket start server, and uh, yours in your page as well. And uh, we basically, through that peer, we were able, I hope, to discover each other. Your peer IDs should be appearing here as, uh, as you connect to me. Um, anyone had problems? Oh, everyone? Uh, bigger. Uh. Okay, um, uh, going pretty briefly to this, basically uh, I don't really like these colors, um, so, <laughs> so a an another different way of uh, creating your node is through basically require lip2p and extend it to your own class. And uh, I have this configuration for this. So basically, I use uh, WebSockets and uh, WebSocket Star Server. And uh, I connect to that WebSocket Star Server in your uh, web page that you open at the same. And uh, through that server, we were able to discover each other and talk. Uh, and I think I should be almost done or, if, or really done at all. I just need to go here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um.